This uh, beautifully smiling African woman is Dr. Faluke Adebisi. Yeah, um, she is a lecturer at the University of Bristol um, and one who is forwarding Pan African theory in the academy. And I had the pleasure of taking part. I spoke at uh, a, a conference called Reengaging Pan Africanism at Birmingham City University in 2018. Uh, Dr. Faluke was another one of the speakers at the conference. Um, and so she was kind enough to share her paper uh, with me, which I'm going to quote um, from shortly. Yeah. What, what she's looking at here is the concept of tribe. Yeah. And we're looking at this because within Pan African circles, it has been the modus operandi when discussing African uh, indigenous people groups and nations to use the word nation as opposed to tribe, yeah? To use the word, so we don't refer to the Yoruba as a tribe, we refer to the Yoruba as a nation. We don't refer to the Yoruba, to, to, the, to the Zulu and, 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 the, uh, and, the, and the Osa and the Indebele and the Kikuyu and the Maasai and the uh, uh, Bakongo as tribes. We, we refer to them as nations. We do not refer to the Dinka and the Lua as tribes. We refer to them as nations. Why? Dr. Faluke Adebisi says, it may be presumed that the best way in which to speak of Africa with an anti-colonial script would be through the medium of tribe. However, the word and concept of tribe carries with it within it so much of the colonial narrative that it is an unreliable narrator of reality. We are deconstructing identity. We are deconstructing the terminology that is used to, ex to give expression to our identities. Okay? We're not just accepting the dominant narrative for the sake of accepting the dominant narrative. We are engaging in a critical analysis of the dominant narratives and its utility to us as African people's continent or diaspora. <laughs> Tribe is an inexact descriptor. It does not correlate to size. Or come. There are people groups on the African continent who are referred to as tribe, even though their population size is comparable to some entire nations. Yeah? Um, it does not correct the size or composition or internal homo homogeneity. Yes. It obfuscates reality and history, mythologizing, fetishizing, and reducing uh, African pre colonial polities and carries within it the pejoratives of outdated social theory, including primitiveness and savagery. Tribe arises directly out of the racial character, char sorry, categories which served as justification for colonization. This is an interesting point, you know. Whereas um, we have many who want to negate the concept of race uh, on scientific, on a scientific basis, But at the same time, reinforce the concept of tribe scientifically. What Dr. Faluke Adebisi is highlighting here is that the tribal characterization is synonymous with the racial characterization of African people in the minds of European colonizers and more specifically Western anthropologists and theologians. I hope ones the ones are following where I'm going with this. All right. All on there. The sort of my stick. Okay. Right. Most African languages have no similar word for tribe. Words used by Africans to self-identify more are more similar to people or nation. So we say people group, we say nation. The colonial creation of tribe basically replicates the colonial creation of state. 
in that it traps fluid fluid humanity into cultural cultural and nationalistic borders they did not choose the idea of tribe conjures this idea that these people live over yasso these people live over there and they never interact except maybe if there's a tribal war going on yeah other than that they have no relationship they have no they have no means of relating cordially productively amenably they have that doesn't exist among tribes that's not the, the concept that we associate with tribes we don't we don't associate concepts of higher forms of social and people organization with tribe because tribes are primitive yeah and so on all right um it doesn't consider the fact that africans traveled across so called tribes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and married into Anyway, let's let's move on. I'm, I'm doing a lot of explaining. Intercultural national boys, I did not choose. It prevents agency, change, and development. This is important. The people them that reinforce this idea of the tribal consciousness want seem do so to negate uh, the conscious development of African peoples along Pan African lines. But don't seem to be a, don't seem to do it when it comes to the national the, the national borders, the nation state borders that are defined by Europeans. So it appears that Africans can develop nation state borders defined by Europeans under the authority of Europeans, but cannot through our own agency and the will for change and development develop our own larger people group formations. It's well gone. It is the starting point of epistemic violence. The creation of tribe is a sub-step in the creation of the state. And thus, the decolonization of tribe should be part of the decolonization of knowledge of Africa. I believe that speaks for itself. I am not going to extemporize any more for the sake of time, although much could be extemporized upon within that. We, we return to Baba Kwezi Pra. In much the same way that colonialism created cheese where it did not exist, as I mentioned earlier, anthropologists raised sub-nationalities or sub-ethnicities to the conceptual status of tribes. The Dinka in the Sudan were conceptually split into the Atwat, the uh, Gog Gogrial, the Boer, etc. The Madi Moro group was split into Madi, Lugbara, or Lubo, Avukaya, Kaliko in the Sudan, Logo, Madi, Lugbara in Uganda, and Logo, Avukaya, Kaliko, Lugbara in Congo, Zaye. The theoretical and scientific limitations and distortions of this approach has been partially scrutinized by Marquette, yeah, who is an anthropologist, French anthropologist, who suggested that study of large units in Africa. You got to see? Mm. All right. Where was I? Sorry, Kings and Queens. Study, yeah, suggest that study of large units in Africa would be on would be no mean contribution, that should say, to the anthropological theory. Yeah. Again, bear this in mind. Study of what? Large units in Africa would be no mean contribution to anthropological theory. But Shakara, did, did Africa have large, large, large units, large social units, large political units? No, Africa only had tribes, Shakara. What are you dealing with? Yeah, tribes never formed large units with each other. That never happened in pre-colonial African civilization and society, except Egypt. And we all know that Egypt is not an African civilization. Gosh, mm. let's move forward. <laughs> yeah, this point cannot be underemphasized. One of the most important challenges facing anthropology in Africa today is identifying what optimal cultural units on the basis of which development efforts can be constructed. Under colonialism, anthropology became a science of tribes in cultural contact and the process of acculturation. Anthropology became about how can we get these savage Negroes 
to accept the benefits of higher civilization and stop warring and savaging each other. Yeah, that's what, that, that's, what that's about. <clears throat> Administrative principles, which are methodologically constructed along the lines of proliferated divisions, facilitated the process of rule. Yeah, so the emphasis of the tribal consciousness was deliberately manufactured to facilitate the rule of the colonizer, which is why within the process of African liberation efforts, African liberation freedom fighters have sought not to negate the existence and the legitimacy of indigenous people groups, but to decolonize the concept of those people groups as associated with the idea of tribe. Get rid of the antagonism inherent with that concept, yeah, and emphasize the relationship culturally, linguistically, spiritually, economically among groups of African people. So one is coming from a colonial European Western Eurocentric consciousness. The other is coming from an African-centered, African liberation-oriented intentionality and interest. The segmentary lineages became instruments of the colonial administrative policy. All right. So we've just been told that it would be good if we can analyze larger units social units among african people well a good place to start in this regard is pre-colonial black africa yeah another good place to start is